Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zentangle teacher. Welcome to day one of our January challenge. This challenge is called A Fragment of Your Imagination, and it was created by the Seven Forests, Five Rivers Facebook group. They are a group of certified Zentangle teachers, and they are the ones who create the yearly Inktober challenges. They put so much work into this and they do such a beautiful job and I'm very excited to be making a video a day to share with you how I'm making the fragments. So this is their um, Facebook group, 7F5R Challenge. And if you're using hashtags, you can do the Fragment of Your Imagination Challenge 2024. So they have a beautiful packet on their website that is downloadable. And on each page, there is beautiful artwork. And then they have the, the daily challenges. And so this one says, hello, 2024. We have all 31 days of January already spoken for. And spoken is the name of the tangle we are putting in this fragment. So you can click on the blue ink and it'll take you to a step out of how to create this. Okay, so they've got 31 challenges and this is what I am doing mine on. They have lots of information in their packet about different ways to go about making your fragments. And um, some people are making really big grids. Some people are doing, um, you know, little tiles, big tiles, mosaics. There's a million ideas. So feel free to do whatever you would like. This is what I am going to do. So I have created 31 squares that are the size of the bijou tiles that I love from Zentangle. And this is downloadable on my Facebook page called Let's Tangle. So you can download it and you can print it if you would like to do what I am doing. So I printed mine on cardstock. And at the end of the month, I'm going to cut out the squares and I'm going to make this little kind of a ring filled with all of my fragments and reticula. So I'm very excited about that. So feel free to download this and use it. The last page has some blank ones where you can draw your own um, reticula, which is the shapes that we're drawing inside of. So you don't have to use my ideas, you can create your own. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. I'm using my, oh goodness, my Micron PN plastic nib pen. I also highly recommend for this one using the Micron 01 or 05. It's a smaller tip and really great for detail work. But I'm gonna stick with my PN for right now. All right, so the very first one is called Spoken and it was created by Maria Thomas of Zentangle. So this is a classic Zentangle tangle that we're gonna be putting in these squares. All right, so to make this one, we begin with a circle. So we just put it in the center of one of our squares. And then she was inspired to create this after looking at spokes on a bicycle. So spokes on a bicycle, if you can envision it in your head, they've got all these little spokes coming out in different directions, and then they kind of crisscross each other. And so we're gonna be drawing some in the front and then we're gonna be drawing some in the back as well, okay? So to make this, I'm going to just kind of run my pen along the side of the circle. And then I'm gonna come out at one point and just go straight to the edge. Then I'm gonna run my pen along that circle and I'm gonna come out straight to another edge. And I'm gonna go around again and do another one and another one. And I like how these don't just come right off like a 90 degree angle. They're kind of coming off the sides. It does not matter how many you make. We're just learning how to make a little pattern. 
Okay, then I'm going to go to each one of those and I'm going to aura it. So I'm going to go on the inside of it and add a very narrow aura. They're starting to look like the spokes on a bicycle. All looks pretty good. And again, I'm not worried about how many I put on or making them even, it doesn't really matter. And now the kind of tricky part. So if you want to just leave yours like this, go right ahead and you can draw it three more times. But if you want to do what Maria did, she then takes these spokes and she comes out the other side. So I'm gonna take this first one here and I'm going to imagine it coming out the other side and it's gonna go underneath the other spokes. So how it looks like it's going underneath it or behind them. I'm gonna turn my paper a little bit and I'm gonna go to the next one that I made. And then this one I'm going to imagine coming out the other side as well. Now I go to this one. See where that one comes out. Then I go to this one right here. And I'm doing this go behind method, which is called the Hollabaugh method, where we're drawing that line, lifting our pen and coming out the other side. I'm gonna do a quick check. I did this one, this one, this one, this one. Now I'm on this one over here. So I'm going to come across and go all the way out that way and then aura it. Now I'm on this one. The other side is gonna come right up like this. Doesn't that remind you of a bicycle, how they all kind of crisscross? What a fun pattern to make. So I'm gonna do that again. And I'm gonna start at a different point. So I'm gonna come this way and that way. You also could curve these if you wanted to. Um, I'm making mine straight, but you wouldn't have to do that. And then I aura the inside of each of those. I feel like this is one of the hardest ones and it's number one, just because of this go behind piece. So I'm gonna take that first one I made, it's gonna come out the opposite way. Now it looks like it goes all the way across. I'm gonna do this one. This one here would come out this way. This next one. And I think this is my last one. And I love how these look so different from each other, just based off where I placed those initial spokes. This one I'm gonna to try to add a little bit more. I 
do the aura inside each one. It looks cool just like that. And you could even add like a pattern in between these if you wanted to. If you didn't want to do the go behind, you could just fill that in with something else. But I'm going to take that first one and bring it all the way across. So it looks like there's a spoke going all the way. Then I do the next one. I love making these little fragments because once you know what you're doing, you're just repeating it. It's so relaxing. It doesn't have to look like anything specific. I think I got all of them. All right, one more. This one, just for fun, I'm going to make a little bit larger. Because all of these, just like regular tangles, are meant to be played with. Try playing with curved lines. Try playing with adding different patterns in there. I'm doing that aura inside. That looks pretty cool. And then for fun, in the center, I'm going to put in a little spiral. And then I'm going to add the rest of those spikes. So this one's right here. It comes out this way hand out this way. This next one goes through here. I love that this turns out a little bit different every time we make it. This one turned out more like a star. I didn't mean for it to, but I think I got all of them. All right, again, that is Spoken by Zentangle. That is our first fragment, first fragment. I'm so excited. And then tomorrow, we're gonna do ones inside a circle. So I hope that you will come back and join me tomorrow. And I can't wait to see how these all turn out. And I'm excited to see what you do with them. If you would like to add some shading to this one, um, you could, if you drew this nice and large, you could shade every time one of these went over another one, but I'm not gonna do that because I am, I think it's just gonna take too long. It's, it's too intricate. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of graphite around the outside of that middle circle. And I'm gonna take a blending tool called a tortillon and I'm going to soften that and push that outwards. Just giving it a cute little shadow. Then I'm also gonna add some graphite inside the edge of the squares. And what that's gonna do when I push that away from that line and towards the center. It just makes those squares look like maybe the spokes are going like in behind. Does that make sense? Look at how pretty that looks compared to the one that doesn't have the graphite. So these little graphite pencils are available on Zentangle.com and they're just a fun way to add a little bit of dimension to your work. You don't have to do this, especially on fragments and reticula, but I'm going to do them on some of them. Putting that graphite on the inside edge of those squares. 
I'm going to soften it and push it towards the center. <coughs> Excuse me. And there we go. Day one. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope to see you again tomorrow for day two. Bye-bye.